Let's think about Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson is one of the most important because he pins the writing. He's the one who actually talks about God in our documents, isn't he? When people say, well, God's in the Declaration of Independence, well, Thomas Jefferson's the one who writes it, you know? So he kind of matters, doesn't he? If you're going to say, well, America's a Christian government, well, you better look at Jefferson because he's the only one who wor- writes the word God in any of the documents, right? That's the only time it appears in the, any of the documents is when Thomas Jefferson writes it. And what does he say? Does he say the Christian God? Does he say Jesus? Does he say Christ? Does he use Messiah? Does he use any of these words, King of Kings, any of that? No. No, he says nature's God and nature's laws. Like the laws of nature and nature's God. So now, what I want you to see is some of the things that Mr. Jefferson also wrote with his pen. Now, Thomas Jefferson referred to Christianity as America's particular superstition. He viewed every country kind of having a particular superstition. He said that Christianity is our particular superstition. He accused the God of the Old Testament as, quote, as a being of terrific character, cruel, vindictive, capricious, and unjust. So the God of the Old Testament, this is how Thomas Jefferson describes him. So would we expect to think that Thomas Jefferson has the God of the Old Testament in mind when he says nature's God? No, no, he's not referring to the God of the Old Testament when he writes the word nature's God or the phrase nature's God. Let's see what he says about Jesus. This is a quote from Thomas Jefferson's own pen. He wrote many, many words, and so we can all go back and read them if we want to. He says that Jesus did not mean to impose himself on mankind as the Son of God, physically speaking. I have been convinced by the writings of men more learned than myself in the lore. So the lore, by the way, is a kind of a quick giveaway that he he views these as ancient mythical stories in the first place. But secondly, he also tells us that Jesus did not mean to call himself the Son of God, that that's not what the point was. So Jefferson does not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he's convinced by that by people who wrote about these ancient mythical stories. Right? Um, when it comes to church versus liberty, he says, history, I believe, furnishes no example of a priest-ridden people maintaining a, a free civil government. Here you see the p- tremendous um, uh, vitriol that Jefferson and others, including Adams, had for the clergy. There was this. If you look at the attack upon the clergy by the founding fathers, it is just simply astonishing, right? And remember what the Bible tells us is that there's going to be a war on the saints. Are all the clergy just all false? I mean, are we supposed to believe that? All the clergy are false, and the American uh, revolutionaries are the right ones, the founding fathers are the, who don't believe in Jesus, they're the ones who are right, and all the clergy are wrong. Well, we find that Thomas Jefferson had no uh, pity for the clergy, right, at all. And he didn't want them having anything to do with the American experiment. Here's what Thomas Jefferson says about the virgin birth. He says, the day will come when the mystical birth, generation meaning birth, of Jesus by the supreme being as his father in the womb of a virgin will be classed with the fable of the birth of Minerva, oh, this is that old Roman god, in the brain of Jupiter, right? So he's basically saying this idea of the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, that's hogwash. That's just as much as Minerva being born out of the brain of Jupiter, right? This is the guy who writes nature's God. Do you think that he's talking about Jesus Christ? when he writes the word nature's God? I mean, it's an honest question, isn't it? Here's what he says about the Gospels. This is the writer of the one who writes God in our founding documents, our inspired founding documents, by the way. Here's what Thomas Jefferson has to say. He says, we discover in the Gospels of the New Testament a groundwork of things impossible, of superstition, fanaticism, and fabrication. Here's what else he says. For if we could believe that he, Jesus, really countenanced the follies, the falsehoods, and the charlatanisms which his biographers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, father on him, and admit the misconstructions, interpolations, and theorizations of the fathers of the early and the fanatics of the latter ages, the conclusion would be irresistible by every sound mind that he, Jesus, was an imposter. He was an imposter. So he said, if you take the Bible at at face value, Jesus is an imposter. This is basically what he's saying. He also made a list of things that he considered to be artificial systems invented by ultra-Christian sects. So let me show you the list that he wrote with his own pen. He said, these are the things that I believe 
are artificial, that they were invented by the church and they aren't real. Okay. These are things that he does not believe are real. They're artificial systems. The immaculate conception of Christ, his deification, the creation of the world by Christ, Christ's miraculous powers, Christ's resurrection, Christ's visible ascension, original sin, atonement, regeneration, election, orders or hierarchy, etc. Okay, so all of these things he considers to be artificial systems that have been added to Christianity, that Jesus was not born of a virgin, that Jesus was not God, that he did not create the world, that he does not have miraculous powers, that he did not rise from the dead, that he did not visibly ascend, that there is not such a thing as original sin, that there is no atonement, that there is no regeneration, that there is no election, that there are no orders or hierarchy. Okay, this is the man who writes about God in your inspired documents. Why won't the preachers talk about this? I mean, right here, the guy who's writing about God in the documents is telling you he doesn't believe in Jesus. So what God does this man believe in? How many of our, he goes on, how many of our wisest men still believe in the reality of these inspirations while perfectly sane on other subjects.